In this session, we're going to look at adding counters to our program. This enables us to track the number of times a 6 or a 1, etc., will appear in our program. To do this, we've got to actually add counters. So, what we need to do first of all is actually add to our variable list a counter. So, we're going to go var and we're going to put i n o 6 for number of sixes. And I want to track how many times 6 comes up in our list. So the program will allocate this variable. We've got an I roll dice where we'll ask the user how many times would we like to roll the dice. At the moment it's set to 5. We'll increase that now to a default of 10 so we've got some data to track. Because in theory if we're tracking 6s, only once every 6 roll the dice should come up. So as we go through, if you need to look at for do loops and how this program works, please have a look at a previous tutorial and I'll put a link in the comments below. And what we want to do now is track it. So we're going to start with an initialize section. This is where we can set the default values for any variables. So in here we're actually going to default i n o 6, the number of 6's, is going to be equal to 0 to start with. So when the program first starts, we're going to make sure that is 0. Now if I want to do, say, dice number 5, I could actually also add 5, comma, I could do 4, etc, etc. But at the moment I'm only going to do 5. You can flesh out the rest of the program to have it down to 1. And then you can initialize them all. So if you want to track the number of 5s, I number of 5s will also be equal to 0. This section here is actually our input where we're asking the user to enter in the information and then we're going to process this. So we're following a very structured program way of doing things. In our for do loop we have all this information and then the final one is the output down the bottom here. and which is only going to be the finished information at the end of the day. So how do we track these numbers? Well we're just going to concentrate on the number 6 at the moment, I number 6. So what we're going to do is when it starts generating the random numbers, so here is the line where the random number is generated, we need to see what is inside I random number and then we need to make a decision about that. And what we want to say is if I random number is equal equal to 6. We want to do something. So we want to see if that's equal to 6. So the number that we generate here, you can copy and paste these in. So the number that we generate here, if that is equal to 6, what we want to do is add 1 to our number of 6 counter. So to do that, so if this is true, we want to say that that is equal to itself plus 1. So it will actually add 1 to itself. Another way you can do this to increment by 1, we can actually go i number 6 plus plus, that will do the same thing, or you can actually use i number 6 plus equals 1 and that will increment it by 1 as well. So you just need one of these three methods, much the same as the way that we increment the for do loop. So this is true, every time it's a 6, it'll increment this by 1. And then even though we're showing all the random numbers in the list as they come down, once we get to the output, we want to go finish, and then we'll actually output the number of 6s. To do this, once again, we need to put a break tag in here. But we don't need the plus sign because all this is HTML text anyway. And then we can actually use the document.write line, and I'm going to just pinch this one here. That's already been written for us. And I want to change it. Actually, what I want to put out isn't the number, I number, the dice roll. I actually want to put out I number 6. And we may want to actually show that. So we could actually have at the start of it, number of 6s. And put a, a colon space. So what we're going to get number of sixes, a space, plus it will show the number that's been stored in here, and then a break tag to go the return. So let's see if our program works. We'll roll the dice. 
number of rolls. Yes, let's go with 10. And you notice as we go through, it said the number of sixes is one. As we look through the list, there is only one. So let's run the program again, and this time we'll give it some more options. We'll go to 25. So then it's produced 25 numbers, and this time there are seven of them in there. So this is really useful if you're doing statistics and maths, and you have to roll a dice 100 times. Press Enter. Down at the bottom, we can see of 100 rolls of a dice, only 14 were sixes. Now you can expand this program to track the number of fives, four, three, two, ones. Remember that when you're going through, you need to use the if statements for this, or you can expand this to use what's known as a switch statement or case statement to be more efficient, and remember to output the information correctly. So hopefully this has got you underway of making a really good dice program.